I just got tired of dying. So, <laughs> so thus, here we are. Oh, I'm not giving it up yet. I'm still holding on strong, pretending I don't have that gray hair. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think I think if we were still going into the office, it might have been different. I, I don't think I could have dealt with the, you know, changing of the hair. The transition period, <laughs> Hi, yeah. <everybody. laughs> yeah. Well, see, and I got dark hair to begin with, so mine is like a big <laughs> contrast when you see it coming through. Um, my hair is almost uh, very dark too, normally. Okay. Yes. Yes. I have very dark hair. Okay, okay. <laughs> I dyed it a little bit lighter as, as oh, I got older, I got longer. <laughs> I see what you did there. Okay. Yep. Okay. That was yep. smart. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome to Spilling Ink. <laughs> <laughs> Never know what we're going to talk about. Hey, yes. Anita. Hello. Anita's always right there as soon as we start. Well, I guess we should get going then. So yeah, as, as Jane said, welcome everybody. We're <laughs> spilling ink, the talk show that takes you behind the book to meet the authors and professionals in the publishing industry. And this is our last show of the year, isn't it? Yes, it is. Oh my goodness. Where did this year mm. go? And oh, it went, right it went zap gone. <laughs> <laughs> we blinked and it was gone. Yeah. yeah, it gets worse joking. as you get older. I, I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> it just does. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're just going to have to deal with it. It is what it is, right? Mm-hmm. Right. And we've got Kara this week to uh, come chit chat with us. How are you doing tonight, Kara? Good. I'm tired. You ready for it's the uh, nice. end of the year? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> it's as ready as it gets, right? Like, I. I have plans. We'll see how they work out. Mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> Anita says good riddance to 2022. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Cause it seems like every year it's been getting a little bit worse. I'm not sure I want to see yeah. what 2023 has to offer. <laughs> yeah. For the first time I actually have outside plans for New Year's Eve. So yeah. Oh, what are you we're, doing? We're going down to York beach, meeting up with friends and staying at a hotel down there that has a Christmas party. They, they went to it last year and said it was great. We said, okay, we'll do it this year. Very so. cool. <laughs> yes. I will probably spend New Year's the same way I have for the last couple of years. <laughs> I'll be comfortable in my home and I, maybe we'll stay up for the fireworks, but probably not. <laughs> it's like, oh man, I have to find clothes for the <laughs> New Year's wow. Eve party. <laughs> I haven't done that yet. Oops. <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh, you better hurry up. We don't have too many weeks left before it happens. I'll find something. <laughs> you say that. I'm like scrambling. I could have sworn there was an extra week left before my kids went on, on Christmas break. <laughs> no, this coming week is it. That's it. I have to have everything done that I need to have done before they go on break. Now. Literally 14 days. <sighs> 14 days. Today's the 10th. 14 days to, to Christmas Eve. No, I'm not ready. <laughs> I'm totally ready because I don't care. Like I just, <laughs> I do all my stuff. I do all my stuff early and I don't, you know, like I don't go anywhere and I don't really, yeah, even when I was in the military, like I would volunteer to work the holidays so that I didn't have to deal with holidays. Mm-hmm. Um, oh I would be like, Oh no, if you got a, if you, you have a family, go ahead. I will take your shift because I did not, the travel, the, you know, like Mm. the stress. And it's like, it's not like I don't want to be around people, but Mm. I like being around people when there's not like all this pressure and expectation, you know? I I mean, I used to love it when they'd come to me. When they'd come to my house for Christmas or everything. Because it's, you know, it's like, I was, I loved that. But, you know, now we go down to my daughter's because mm-hmm. everybody conglomerates there because all the you know people are in Connecticut not up here in New Hampshire and then they come up here afterwards so <laughs> yeah I go nowhere yeah. uh, I, th- I think probably like we used to do that you know we would switch alternate um, mm-hmm. and you know because but now like the last three years even but I would say probably the last 10 years mm-hmm. um, we're just like we're not I'm done traveling for <laughs> holidays. 
done with it. Because mm. we're always the one doing the traveling because we're the ones that are not located mm. near right family. Know, near family. And so they're, and you're always expected to be the one to, to make the trip. But then it's, it's like, that's a significant trip. <laughs> it's a significant effort mm -hmm. to get there and then, you know, be caught up in worst time of year to travel. Yeah. Worst like it's time to travel. Yeah. It's, it's like, it's I not... love you, but no. And yeah, I've gotten stuck in an, it, it, mm -hmm. in a, in Cincinnati. <laughs> the only time I've ever been in Cincinnati overnight um, on Christmas day. And we got to the hotel and they said you could order room service, but we get to the hotel, the hotel, the room, they didn't have room service. It was Christmas. So my no little way. children had to eat vending machine. <laughs> oh, that was a memorable yeah. Christmas. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Then that should go in a book. Yeah. <laughs> the my, vending my machine Christmas. Yes, my five-year-old and less than one-year-old. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's so much fun. Mm. Oh. But you made it work. Yes, we, we did. And, and, and we laughed and about it And they probably now. had a good time. Yeah, because like yeah. as kids, like that, yeah. that would probably be like you were probably like, horrified by it. But for, for them. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, give me that Reese cup, the stickers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. They were, they, were, they were probably like, this is the best ever. And, and you're just like, oh I can't feed the children. Mm -hmm. you're right. They would. They would be excited for something like that. It's a it's good that perspective. That. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep, yep, it is. It is. Um. <laughs> so. Now, how about in like the professional sense as authors? Are we ready for the end of the year? Do we have promotions we're trying to do? Do we have schedules we're trying to meet? Deadlines? I know I've got a couple of those that I'm rushing to the finish on. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's the stress right there. Like, yeah, the family stuff, sure. But like the yeah. crap you have to get done before the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Oh, Boy, and you know, and it's... <clears throat> It always seems like there's going to be more time, you know, because it, <laughs> yeah. because everyone during the holiday season, that's what, you know, before it, for at least for me as an author, but I think for a, a lot of authors, like that October to February to March probably is that huge bash of holiday. And I say February primarily because I'm a romance <clears throat> writer right so right. if you're all romance writers valentine's day is is like christmas 2.0 like yeah. it's not it is just that big of a deal um mm -hmm. in the marketing you know arena mm -hmm. of it and if you're a paranormal author that rolling into october and then and then you've got the regular holidays and then the next thing you know it's valentine's day and then summer is rolling around and you've mm -hmm. got your beach reads and, and, and we work on that same kind of retailer system, but the, the end of the year is, is like back to back punches for, right. you know, for planning. Yeah. And yet you still have to get ready for the light, the, the next, the lives and the next thing and everything. <laughs> Yeah. The next physical year, mm. regardless of where your fiscal year is, but the next physical year is, is like right, right around there. And, and yeah, so like, I'm, I don't even know how many groups I'm in for um, doing like takeovers and promotion mm. parties and, and whatever. And I'm just trying to entertain you know that's it like are you not entertained like i feel like <laughs> you know i got stuff going on in my group i'm i'm like you know signed up to do stuff to to help other people that are in you know other anthologies that are you know aiming for for things and and then i signed up for another list aim myself and then i got yeah. my kickstarter in january and i'm i'm I have big plans yeah. and lots of things that are done, but none of it's, even though all that stuff is, is like ready, it doesn't stop because I have to keep ahead or mm -hmm. else I'm, you know, I'm going to run out and that's, 
Yeah. I'm, it's it's like a treadmill. You're constantly, yeah. constantly on, constantly cycling through. Uh, Kickstarter. That was always, con- that, that's always been interesting to me. Can you talk a little bit about like your process jumping into this Kickstarter and what you're experiencing? Because <laughs> so, I, I watch from the sidelines and I'm like, I don't know if I could pull something like that off. Okay. So true story. Uh, when <laughs> I started my podcast, um, Creative Writing with Dr. Nagel, probably like three years ago when we moved here to the mountains and I realized I didn't have anyone to talk to. So, <laughs> so I started a podcast. And all of these um, comic book and graphic novel artists, for whatever reason, they found me first. And because I would interview them, they, they just came. Uh, and one of them happened to be uh, Russell Nolte. And Russell is like the Kickstarter king. Mm-hmm. I, hadn't, I didn't even know what Kickstarter was until that podcast. That was three years ago. Since then, I have been not like officially stalk. Not, I don't stalk him like I stalk Jake Gyllenhaal. But, you know, like I've been watching... <laughs> what you know what he's been doing like how how he he works his system and then fortunately he he must have like completely got that vibe and he wrote a book and he's got like a whole class and and everything and I can't at this point afford to go to the the school that him and and Monica uh, Lionel put together but I did I did buy the book and so for the past and even before I got the book so for the past year and a half I've been planning Hmm. to do a kickstarter and it was just about picking what I was going to do that with um and I had at that time I thought I would do it with my young adult series my drummonds because I've I have their like the the first three books of that right was like drum fight break and then the readers who read it asked me, well, what about their kids? You know, are you going to write them as teenagers? And so we get to see them as parents. And I was like, okay, yeah, sure. So I wrote their kids. And then then people were like, well, are you going to are you going to write their kids as, as parents? You know, so this the the following for that series is very invested in it. And I did. But the thing is, like. I don't know how many people would be, you know, that interested in like Gen Gen Two because I've got like the originals Gen One and then now Gen Two. So I, I'm going to see how it goes with Harpy and the Crossbow um, University series, which is a dark contemporary new adult. Like it is a mind mess. Like I don't even know what to tell you. Like yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so. Crossbow is, this is like an adult content show, right? Like, yes, so, it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> so I, I, I am an avid like reader, audiobook listener, really, because, you know, you, you get limited time with the, with the reading. And I just, I got tired of, of reading, you know, like these, these situations where it's it's like in the in like the reverse harem and the and the bully and the the dark and whatever, and and it seems like the female character she's just always getting tormented and punished with multiple orgasms, and I'm like, what? Like, <laughs> like, like, like that's a punishment. <laughs> I've been bullied in my life, and I'm going to tell you, it never felt like that. <laughs> So Crossbow kind of came as, um, as a result of reading, you know, too many, um, too many of those books and thinking, I, you know, like, I want, I want, you know, her to be, you know, kick ass, but I also, you know, I want there to be like the absence of that, you know what I mean? The, that these things are going. So that's, that's how, that's how Harpy, um, happened. Um, and yeah, like when she, she gets there, they are definitely not like sexing her up. I mean, she's like doing actual, you know, like work and chores and (laughs) like everything, but in the beginning, um, and people really seem to, to like it because it's a, it's a mess, you know, they're all like emotionally messed up and twisted with with different things um 
And, and so I wrote the next two in that series, but I didn't publish the next two because I was like, well, I'm going to do something special with it. And because the readers really want it, I was like, I'm going to do that one for the Kickstarter. So that's how that ended up. But it's got all kinds of really, really like neat stuff. So like, I don't know if I can reach it. And so like I'm working with all kinds of people that I've met just over the years through this writing journey. And, and so like the creative conspiracy um, girls, they took this design that I, I did up for it so that, um, and so this will be in like one of the tiers uh, yeah. where you can get it. And then the bunny house, <laughs> it's the, you know, the house bunny that it's, it's got a significant role in there. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's how she ends up in their, in their, in their um, fraternity to begin with as an employee. Um, mm -hmm. And then she just kind of takes over from there, but it just gets oh. crazy. Cool. So when does the crazy. Kickstarter start running? January 10th. Okay. The, the preview link is up now. So you can kind of go see the insanity that I've got going on over there with it. Um, and so with, with that, right. Um, the, the planning for it is, is planning, it's planning merch on small scale and working with people that understand that this might not make, you know, so if mm -hmm. it doesn't make, then I've just got a prototype of something so that I can put it up there as a potential or as a possibility. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, there's the, the stockpiling and hoarding of um, stickers and pens and pens and, and things because those are on sale, like right through this holiday season. So you can't wait to find out if that's going to make or mm -hmm. not. You've got to get those deals now because if that makes in January, they're not going to be on sale. So mm -hmm. it's a lot of planning uh, for anyone who, who is looking at, at potentially doing it, I would definitely suggest getting that book, um, you know, from, from Russell and Monica and like reading it, studying it, studying some other Kickstarters, going there, funding, like even if you back them, um, you know, at a dollar here and there, you get to see the emails that they're sending. You get to see how they're handling the campaign. And that just helps you as far as like ideas of like what you mm. can do, what you can offer, um, to, to make it attractive and appealing to, you know, the people out there who may be giving you a shot for the first time. Hmm. And that's the wild part of it, right? Is like, I have book one is out there um, as like clickbait, I guess. <laughs> um, but it, it comes out of KU uh, in time <clears throat> for the Kickstarter. And then, you know, that's the only place you're going to get book two and three. And then it won't be, until four months after that, then I'll put book two and three up, you know, wide. So That's a lot of planning, a lot more work to do than I think most people expect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like you just said, you're doing it now for something that starts in January. So mm -hmm. like, right. adding to your deadlines of things that have to be done before mm -hmm. the end of the year. Yeah. And then knowing that, like, you, you know, you're not going to, if you're relying on the Kickstarter funds to, to cover some of the, of the cost of things, right? So if you're putting, um, if you're putting people's names in the acknowledgements, and so I have like a tier on there where yeah, that, that can happen. Um, that means I can't send the, a book to print until I have everyone's names. Right. Um, and so I have the, prototype right of of a book without that and then i have to you know send it and do the bulk order of the books you know with that mm -hmm. um and again like artwork or anything else that's um that's getting commissioned in the in the process of this right you know it's like oh here's a sample of of something if this doesn't fund then that sample's going nowhere you know right. <laughs> Um, so it's, and when, it's just wild. And, and you have to be careful with commissioned artwork because it has to have the right, um, 
licenses. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> my, my brain just blanked. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm sorry, my husband's cleaning in the, in the other room. I've like, seen him pass by a few times. <laughs> Yeah. So if you're, if you are, if you are offering like, so if I, if I had something made that is, um, that I'm giving away with it, that's one Mm -hmm. thing. But if, if I'm like going to put together a sticker pack that they can sell, then I need the commercial, you know, I need those commercial commercial rights as well to put that through. Um, so that's, it's, it puts a little bit more on, you know, like the funding of things. But fortunately, both of the artists that I have working on that are, um, you know, are aware the 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 artists who's um, they've both done Kickstarters too. Okay. So that was, you that's know, that good. and that's another thing, right? Is if you're talking to someone about it, you don't want just someone who's awesome at art if you're needing Commercial them to licenses. understand. Yeah what you're doing with this art right so if they've done it before with their own you know with their art then they're way more likely to um you know to get it and to know what you don't know that you need um and so that was that was even um you know both my artists were like okay well let me get you some let me get you some samples or let me get you some stuff that you can you know if it's launching in january so that you have at least something to represent what this is going up you know, in January. So, right. And someone else might not have done that. You know, they might not have even thought about that because to them, it's just art in their queue. Mm -hmm. So I've been really um, like hunting and searching and and working and then trying to find things that people don't uh, typically, you know, offer um, with them. You know, I have a, a, with the add-ons, I have crazy, you know, add on type things like you can, um, you can almost like a, like a movie, right. Where you can do a walk on yeah. in the book, um, that kind of stuff, because I, you know, I have, and not in this, not in the first three here, but I'm writing now books four five and six. Mm-hmm. Um, and so they would have a walk on in, okay. You know, in those, that's cool. So it's an, it's an opportunity in that way too. Right. And then, you know, I just did a whole um, push to get stuff from other authors uh, to send out to my Patreon. Right. So that's a whole nother thing that, and I, I love them because they, I write stuff in there and Mm -hmm. I, share with them. I take their feedback on, you know, on it. They knew before anyone else that I was doing this. They gave me like their input on everything from like what to include to what to, to blur. <laughs> oh, okay. Know? That's um, helpful. And, and so um, for Michelle's question there, the hardest <clears throat> thing about, about doing it is <sighs> doing it. Uh, <laughs> So far, I would say the hardest thing. (laughs) So far, the hardest thing about doing it is um, figuring is is planning it right because and I wouldn't even say that it's the hardest thing about it. It's the thing that takes the longest because there are certain things that you don't have until you have it in order to be able to plan right. So until I finished the third book, I didn't know how many pages this anthology would be Mm -hmm. and they haven't been you know like they haven't been edited yet so they're you know they're in that you know lineup um so to even have an estimate when i'm looking at pricing books for hardcover or for you know for the foil or for any of the special edition kind of stuff i had to i had to have a a window of, of page counts to put in there and then a window of like, well, how many of these am I going to order? And so I have like four or five different um, estimates, you know, based mm-hmm. on that. So, so that I have some picture of if this campaign succeeds, um, 
if they get this many, how many can I, you know, mm -hmm. how many can I get? How do I maximize, you know, this? So it's, it's that. And I, you know, I so it's hate. not something you would wing. <laughs> it's not, no. not something that you would wing. <laughs> I would not recommend winging it. If you're a pantser, don't fly by the seat of your pants on Kickstarter. <laughs> <laughs> you feel called out over here. <laughs> I'm a pantser when it comes to writing. Right now, I know, right? I, I'm a, I, I'm a pantser when it comes to writing. My characters, like they start off one way and then they take me someplace else. Like I, mm -hmm. it, it, even with this series, like if somebody would have told me that I was going to write this, you know, five years ago, I'd have been like, "You are out really? of your mind." I don't write that. Um, but now I do. And I don't, I think that COVID did this to me, honestly. I've because <laughs> it's all COVID's fault. <laughs> I became like, you know, I'm, I'm like, I don't know. I'm, I'm like two soda short of being in the shining up here in this cabin. So it's like, <laughs> I have gone to the dark side in the writing and I'm tempering that with other things, but you know, I'm in there. Like I, I'm, I don't know. So yeah, that's, that's what I would say is the, the hardest part about Kickstarter is the planning. And I would say, give yourself at, at least uh, six to 12 months if you're doing it and go now over there and, um, you know, you, you can back someone for a dollar and get uh, the, you know, like the updates and stuff that you can start looking at and, and determining like what language you like. Uh, from that and it's probably the the teacher the you know the college professor in me for teaching me <laughs> teaching online after you start getting the same feedback you, you know you're like giving your students the same feedback you open up a form and start typing that in <laughs> as a template mm -hmm. so you can you can move it over and that's that's the kind of the same thing there it's like if I see that people are sending the same type of information then I know that that's information that people who are on this platform expect to see and so mm -hmm. I'm going to need to provide those types of updates. Mm -hmm. um, so I just research. reverse engineer yeah. everything. Yep. <laughs> Do your research. Mm -hmm. This is why I haven't done it yet. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but more authors are starting to, to look at it and to use it. And so I, I am always the person who tends to, be last to the post right so i <laughs> i came i did kindle worlds when they were closing right <laughs> it's like i came there and then they closed um all pretty much anything that you know like reverse harem like i am not a trend person I write things when they come to me. And so it could be, I could be influenced by trends if I really start to like something or if my brain starts to rebel against something and wants to do it a different way. Um, but I'm, I just kind of write what, what, you know, what pops up, who's screaming the loudest in my head at that time. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's crazy because I feel like, I'm always on the end of things. And I told myself that was my plan, right? For September, I do my annual planning in September because that's when, when I was born. So it's the annual plan for my life, not just, <laughs> not just my, my career. Um, and I told myself that I was not doing that this year, that I was not going to wait to be the last mm -hmm. out the gate, that I was going to stop being so <laughs> cautious to the point that it was detrimental and that that's the reason why I put, you, you know, it's the reason why I have a, a Patreon. Um, it's the reason why I'm doing the Kickstarter. It's the reason why I put a couple stories up on Bella. It, I'm just, if something doesn't work, that's, you know, that's cool. I'll just, you know, keep it moving. Those books are going to come out one way or the other. Mm -hmm. uh, they just might take longer. I mean, they're done. And that's the thing, right? It's like when you have a stack of, you know, you have like a folder full of written stories that you don't just want to self-edit and put out there. You want to go through the, you know, the hard, the hard way to, to get a, a, a higher quality product, but a higher quality product 
means it costs more. And mm-hmm. um, as an indie author, if there isn't enough of a return on that, it you know, like you can you can stay in the in the red For years. quite a bit. Mm-hmm. And I I you know, it's like I can't continue to justify living in the red. Mm. Um and so that's that's why I'm that's why I'm doing it because if I can if I can get enough just to even cover you know my edits that that's huge for me mm-hmm. Absolutely. and I would get to do all the fun stuff that I don't really get to do with my books because I don't have the you know the funding to do it so. yeah and I've seen a lot of really cool stuff that authors have done mm-hmm. lately with their books, especially when they've found that, that kind of funding. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's really not even me. It's like, what do the readers want? And the readers, you know, like the collectors, right? Because the, 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 probably most of the people who are going to come and get this, they want the stuff they've like, they've all got my, the ebook, right. That's out there. They want the next book. They are probably going to read it as an ebook. They want the special because they're collectors. So just like, you know, the book boxes that I'm in. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Like it's you, you want the special editions. Yeah. yeah you buy you the, want the pretty and, things. That's, that's yeah. why you can go into the stores and find like Jane Austen's book with, seven different you know c- covers and different mm-hmm. designs and everything and because mm-hmm. we, we're collectors that's what we do i mean how many of us as authors we collect journals there aren't even words in the majority <laughs> of them like we collect books without words and we don't <laughs> put words in them they're just blank lines of of possibility and we collect them by the dozen i and swear i will use them one day <laughs> same right like and so when we're looking at things like why would somebody want that book or why would somebody why do they want the pictures and why do they want the 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 overlays and why they because they're collectors why do grown men go to you know um walmart at midnight to get star wars action figures they're collectors (laughs) that's what we do (laughs) no i totally get it and i i agree and to be able to do those fun things for your own mm-hmm. book is, is extra special. Yes. And that's why that's that's why I want to do it is because it's exciting. I mean, I can I can slow roll my writing a, a, another 20 years, you know, like I've been doing it for a long time. Um, but I'd rather not if I don't have to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I, I mean, this was one of the reasons why. I didn't do a Kickstarter, but I just started rolling out the hardcover um, complete edition. So one book has all of the books mm-hmm. in the series. Um, one, I like hardcovers. They're pretty. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and and it's like, okay, I want to be able to offer that, but I want mm-hmm. it to be more special. So mm-hmm. it's 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 not through a Kickstarter because as soon as mm-hmm. I get a cover and, and, and fit it into the the narrow <laughs> um, <laughs> guidelines that Amazon and Barnes and Noble have for art covers. Uh, <laughs> I roll them out, but, but it's just like, it's, it's like, Oh, okay. Since, you know, cause up until last year when they, was it last year that Amazon opened up the beta? Mm-hmm. I think so. Like a yeah. year and a half. Ago. Yeah. Cause yeah. I'm like, Oh, hardcover. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know, that would be kind of fun if I had this in it or that in it. And now I'm, you know, striving to have all my series um, Mm -hmm. compilations together. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to try that. Yeah, I don't get journals. (laughs) We get the journals because they're beautiful and full of potential, but we're afraid our words are not good enough for them. Oh, Mm -hmm. I feel that one. I feel that one. (laughs) It's true, though. Some of those mm-hmm. journals, you're like, I need to save that for a very special, special. thing that I'm going to write about. Yeah. It's just too pretty to mar, you know, with anything that, that's subpar. Get it. I'm I'm odd. I don't get them because my oh. handwriting is hideously awful. 
and I, I love mean, journals. I mean, I in my handwriting, I, I'll start to write somewhat neat, and then it like goes off. It's awful. <laughs> so no, it's I can't like, read my own chicken scratch either. <laughs> no, so 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 a journal to me, unless it was an online one, um, I'm not a collector of journals. <laughs> well, I should probably plug this one because this yes, is going yes. to be going very soon. So for those of you who know about the Acknowledge and Heal PTSD Guide for Women, we now have a journal which 365 days of prompts, of doodling pages, of coloring pages, health trackers, trigger trackers, um, pretty much anything that you can think of that you would want to help you along your journey towards healing. We've included in this massive 400 page, took me forever and a day to form a <laughs> journal. And, it's and I just got it today. So you can tell mm -hmm. it's, it's got the stripe. It's not live yet, yeah. but uh, we've got this one and we've also got one that's going to be going with the soldier's guide, same 400 pages. Um, slightly different interior, obviously, because it's more geared towards the soldiers. But I've been working for the past month on getting these ready. And I know Virginia is excited about them. And uh, as soon as I get approval, those are going live. So definitely that, a journal worth keeping. Awesome, though. Yes, this is, this is definitely mm -hmm. one I think that will be super useful. I we, we put our heart and soul into the books. And so the journal was just like an extension of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which is awesome. <laughs> and it'll be, it'll be and, oh my God, the formatting. The formatting. Oh, I'm going to have nightmares over the formatting forever. <laughs> same here, but not the same formatting that you're doing. <laughs> Having those, you know, the bleed and non bleed and <laughs> bleed settings. Oh, yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> Worked out in the end. Worked out in the end. Yes. But yeah, the, the idea is to create something beautiful and useful, and hopefully we did it. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, we had some comments popping in here. Let's see. Uh, when you do a set in one book, do you offer an incentive, like a discounted price or bonus material? Well, it's a hardcover. So um, it's it's more expensive than the, the ebook, obviously. Um, sometimes there's bonus material in there, or sometimes it's 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 a like like what I'm doing for two of my series now, it's a it's a re-edited version, so it's a tighter, um, tighter writing uh, than it was way back because these are my first series. <laughs> so yes, and Anita sympathizes with the formatting issues. Yeah, formatting for for regular novels. I mean, you know that that's a hassle in itself, and then mm -hmm. trying to format a journal. <laughs> With, with pictures that you can color mm -hmm. <laughs> and some of those are really awesome <laughs> i spent many a night screaming at my computer why will this work <laughs> <laughs> just like step away step away from the keyboard <laughs> but it will all be worth it if it is helpful and useful to other people yes. that was the end exactly. goal make it make exactly. it worthwhile Course, definitely you know, i have i have my own trauma now <laughs> <laughs> i think you know what i think that that's a that's a, another book that you all should you you guys should work on um because i don't have time to work on it but <laughs> i've always got that is like my number one line is like this would be a great thing for someone else to write because i don't have time for it um but think about like for authors the I don't want to say like the trauma, but like the, the journey of authoring is different and the same, right? Like there are elements of it that are the same, but there are pieces of it that are very different. Um, and it would be interesting because it's something that, that I would do with my creative writing classes, right? Like you'd have them write something at the beginning and then you'd have them read that something at the end so they could yeah. see the the difference in that the, journey. The and difference. I, yes. I think that, a lot of times authors get get hung up on the amount of money that they're making versus the um, the difference that they might be making or the progress that they're making just within their own journey because we are in it, we're not removed enough from it to, to see it or to experience it. Um, and it's not until you go back to like your first books and, and you're like, 
who the blip wrote that? How did that get past? <laughs> you know, and then and then you you get that sense of nostalgia of that person who was just starting out, whose the biggest stress was just getting published, right? Mm-hmm. And you want to go back and and tell that person this is not your biggest worry. <laughs> right, like, exactly. It's after you're published. Like, Although, oh. although in doing the going back, um, I recently read one of the series and, you know, to try to clean it up and format it. And I actually read it and I cried. And I'm like, oh. holy shit. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, this is, this is heart-wrenching. <laughs> And then I'm like, I really wrote this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but it was just like, you know, you're, I'm sitting there, I'm trying to edit and do this stuff and I'm crying and I'm like, what is wrong with me? <laughs> well, it's so, because it's good. It's like you, all mm-hmm. this time has passed and those characters still have that. And I time. miss them. I mm-hmm. miss those characters. Mm-hmm. It made me miss them even more. So <laughs> stop to become murdering like family. Them. Like yeah, extended family. After a while, you know them. You know what's going on in their lives, and you get oh, to go yeah. back and check in on them. Yeah. yeah. Well, this family was has been through from book one to the to the end of um, Death Chronicles two. So that's over, you know, a span of what mm-hmm. twelve years. Yeah, long Something time. Like that you know, because some they of those deaths up, are really heart wrenching stories. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> they creep up. What? What, so some of those deaths are heart wrenching, by the way. Yes, they are. <laughs> and, it's, and, and sometimes they come back. <laughs> yes. That's kind of yeah. nice. Yeah, when you're writing contemporary, you can't always you can't always do that in a traditional or a mm-hmm. that same kind of you know kind of way. And mm-hmm. that, I mean, it's one of the reasons why I've I've explained to everyone with that why series like Gen Two, like yeah. it ends there because in order for it to continue. Um, I would have to, I would have to kill off the character that started it all. And I, I, I won't, mm-hmm. I won't take him. Like, I have that. like, what, four generations, five mm-hmm. generations mm-hmm. from, from that first one. Yeah. And you have to lose people because that's oh, life, yeah. right? So you have oh, yeah. to pick and choose like, who's getting the ax, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> who's getting I, the... I, as Katie knows, I, I, I don't really have a problem with that when I'm writing it. <laughs> if it if the story calls for it, I go there. Um, yeah, you want to go with the things that, that hurt the most because that's mm-hmm. what's going to have the biggest impact on your characters. It's oh, yeah. going to have the biggest impact on your readers. But it's mm-hmm. also, you know, like they're, unless it's a character you want to kill, it's, it's, it's hard. Right. Oh, yeah. It, it, it has been make that <laughs> and reading it again it's like oh my god you know and i'm i i'm going all the way back to the beginning with the two two series that i'm trying to fit into the hardcover right now so it's it's interesting so going back to michelle's question about w- whether or not um uh, Miss Taylor here gets to add in bonus content. Right now, she has too many pages. She's you know, trying to figure <laughs> out if she can. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> there be no bonus in this book. No. Wait, no. The bonus is the book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, that yeah, in like... itself, for a collector, is a thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Limited edition. You're only going to get this form. You, you can... know, in this one option. Right. Use your exactly. deleted scenes in your, you know, like if you delete things in the edit, like then put them in your newsletter as like Ooh. bonus content. Like that. these are deleted scenes. Look Ooh. what did it make the setting floor. You know, we we <laughs> again, right? We're collectors by yeah. by nature. We're we're just hoarders of art and and artistic uh, things. It's why we go to see like that extra fifteen minutes of whatever movie you know they mm-hmm. release. Like, and and then if you don't even understand like. Where did those 15 minutes come from? Like, I don't mm. <laughs> you know. That's why Avatar is coming back, right? right. I still don't get that. This, it's so far removed. Oh. <laughs> it is what it is. So, Hello, Pat. This is Ricky Bobby. Aww. <laughs> El Diablo, the fighting chicken. Um, from Talladega Nights, my we we are we lost our 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 cat Charlie. We didn't lose him. He he passed. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, 
I was like determined like that was it. Like we were not going to do another cat. You know what I mean? Because at some mm -hmm. point there's there's an age when people, you know, don't typically have children for a reason. Um, that same age is where you probably shouldn't have kittens for a reason. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so um, but my my husband uh, was really, you know, dealing with some some grief there and. Uh, and so I, I was like, well, if we're meant to have cats, like another cat, mm -hmm. it'll, it'll, it'll happen. And then these two little boys, uh, oh. and, uh, and, and he named them Shake and Bake. Yeah. They're brothers. They're very, um, you know, like Shake and Bake. It's Ricky Bobby and, and Cal Naughton Jr. And, I don't think Ricky Bobby got the message that he's supposed to be my cat. Uh, <laughs> his brother totally, totally has that. He's very calm or whatever. Um, this one, not so much. He <laughs> knocks over everything, attacks me. Um, he wants to be like wherever I am. He's, he's a mess. <laughs> and some of that's nice, but some of it's like. I love be. cats, but I'm allergic to them. Oh. Yeah, so so is my when husband. I touch them, <laughs> yeah, when I touch them or they rub against my face, mm -hmm. I break out like in hives. But ah, being around be them, I'm fine. Yes, he yeah. he he has all the congestion, and then he will. Um, so he if he spends too much time like playing with them, or if they sleep on you know on him or whatever, then he's got it. He's got to shower in order to get yeah breathability back. Yeah, no, it doesn't. It doesn't hit my nose. It just it makes me itch like mm -hmm. it's like crazy. And if I if God help me, if I pet a cat and rub my eye, oh my, my eye. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she it's has like having pink eye. Yeah, it's like having pink eye, and it's like it feels like I have glass in my eye. I grew up with cats. That you know, my my parents always had one, and and so it, it was very difficult. <laughs> Knowing that I was allergic, but eh. yeah, but I love them. They're so they're so sweet sometimes, and sometimes sometimes, sometimes they're they're not. There's the other one. Yep. Hello, Cal. <laughs> he's, he's much easier. <laughs> of course, I say that he's going to probably show out now and knock some shit over. He's going to dump on the back of your chair. <laughs> right, like a liar of you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you must prove her wrong. <laughs> So what, what book stuff are we talking about? So but speaking of cats, like these yeah. cats have, have inspired me. So like one of the other things in my Kickstarter is that you can name a cat. Mm -hmm. um, like if we get to it, like if it hits a, like a certain um, thing, like one of the bonus uh, are, um, you know, like whatever levels that are unlocked is that everyone will get to, um, to name a cat because I'm kind of inspired by that, um, that cat restaurant. Um, in in Georgia and Savannah because I go to Literary Love Savannah mm -hmm. annually. Um, that event, I'm part of the volunteer staff there. I love that event. I love the readers there, mm -hmm. and I hear about that restaurant every single time we go. Like somebody will go with a group of people down there because you you eat like at the restaurant, but the restaurant is also full of cats. So you just got cats where you can pet them, play with them, whatever, the whole time um, <laughs> you're in there. And I thought, you know, that would be kind of fun to put in, in a book in a little bit of a different way. So I'm going to, I'm going to put, put a, a, a stop chewing on that. I'm going to put a, um, a place in, in again, you know, four five and six that has a, uh, a cat house uh, of mm. sorts. <laughs> I love that idea. And so you'll get to name the cat and that way if you get the book then you'll you'll know yeah. which cat was yours Aww. <laughs> you <mean. laughs> fun little incentives I like that yes well good luck with the, uh, the kickstarter I mean it sounds like you have put so much time and effort and thought into getting this ready mm -hmm. and it, you said it starts in January yeah January 10th and, and you can see the for? Uh, I in just 22 days. Wow. Um, so it's a very short, short campaign because I 
again, like uh, that's one of the things that they, they recommend in the book is like, if it's your first, if it's your first launch, go, you know, like go small. Um, so I have like, I have, you have to have, you have to plan big, but launch small because, mm -hmm. you know, you've got to be able to scale it. Um, and that's so how that's many levels kind of are there. I have, um, I think I have like six different, um, like love, like backer level incentives. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. But then for the, um, like when I hit different, different milestones, whether it's a dollar milestone or a number of, of people backing it milestones. So like, like my first milestone, just to even get 10 people to back it, which could be 10 people at $1, right? Like, um, mm -hmm. is when I get 10 people, then I will put the, um, the playlists up. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll share like my, my playlist that I used for inspiration for the books. Uh, and then, the, the next one is for um, the art. There's one for, if we hit that, then it's for the comic book. Um, mm -hmm. You know, just other other things all the way up to if I get like the big, the big one um, for, to be able to put it in audio. Okay. So. Hmm. Wow. You'll have to come back and let us know how it goes. I'm, I'm yeah. very interested to see you know, all the planning and everything, how it plays out. And like I said, I've, I've seen Go starters, it. but I have not, yeah. haven't dived in and, and tried one myself, but definitely sounds like a very intricate process. Mm -hmm. and, and I may be, and again, because I've been stalking, you know, Russell for three years, like I, I, I may be overdoing it for a, you know, <laughs> <laughs> because I've been like, because I have been like reverse engineering this thing for, for so long and taking so many notes and watching and planning and, and, and whatever is like, I don't know if the average person that's doing them is, you know, going to go on this scale or with this, this much. Um, <clears throat> but I am. Um, hmm. so. Well, it sounds like you're setting yourself up for success. So which is good. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, doesn't matter what other people are doing. You've done all yes. of your homework. You are prepared for it and you're setting yourself up so that you will have everything ready to go. And I, I applaud you for that. <laughs> Seriously. You know, writing, doing all the things we've do, been doing for the sets we're in and, mm -hmm. and kicking this off. That's, that's amazing. Along with a full-time job. <laughs> okay, where do you find the extra hours in the day because i swear you know there's 24 of them but that doesn't feel like there's 24 of them. no <laughs> so i i don't have a life um outside of this cabin <laughs> <laughs> i mean i really we you know like we live in the middle of nowhere and winter is coming and yeah. i mean once it gets cold up here i mean Nobody what goes am out. I doing? Where am I going? And then when it <laughs> snows, I'm definitely not going anywhere. That's why mm -hmm. I said, like, I, I have to write because otherwise it would, it would, it would get like real, real shiny, like real quick around. Here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. there's, I mean, there's nothing like I live literally in a cabin in the woods and, um, I get a lot of writing done actually because I had, I have, you know, like, what else am I going to do? Cook? Yeah. I don't, I'm not I don't good at that. Shows. I, yeah, exactly. I, I'm just like, okay, yeah, now I'm writing at night after the yeah. day job. <laughs> well, and that's it, right? So I have my, my day job, but my day job starts at like 730 in the, in the morning. Mm -hmm. Um, and it is, it is very project based. So sometimes I can be on there and I can, I can work on like what I'm working on, um, ad, you know, admin wise. Um, but I might not hear from my team for, you know, like a week. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's just sort of like, I can, again, like over here, you know, I have the, the cricket and whatever, like I can be doing that and doing this. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and so I multitask like a, like, like a crazy queen. person. Yes. Yeah. Like it's a, <laughs> so like yeah. while I'm doing that work, I'm doing this so that in my off time from that work or in, in the, 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 I only 
do um, coaching, you know, three or four nights a week. And, um, you know, that's a, a part-time job for university because I need to, you know, stay within that, that college scope as well. And um, again, like depending on, you know, what's, you know, what's going on there and we're getting ready to their semester based. Right. So the break is getting ready to come up. So that means I have nothing after my day job to do in the evenings. Mm -hmm. um, but right. And so, plan. Yeah. yeah. But like, <laughs> right. And yeah. And do this. Mm -hmm. So I, I, and I had that whole year of, of COVID where uh, when we first moved up here that, you know, I wasn't on, on the contract for the full-time job. I was searching for a part-time job. So my full-time job was writing and I wrote so freaking much that now I have nothing to like, I, I, I can't keep up with mm -hmm. what I have. So I've got to start getting it out there, which means I got to start getting it edited, which means I've got to start making money enough to get it mm -hmm. edited. So the that cycle it's not... continues. <laughs> yeah. The cycle continues. And, and yeah, like, again, you know, just, just like, um, like she just mentioned, you know, winter is a prime writing time. Yeah. Um, and I get like that seasonal affective disorder. Like I can, I could hibernate for the winter. Darren like honestly, yeah. <laughs> I could, <laughs> I could just do it. So I've got, you know, I get like that little, um, like that little light, you know, that helps to give you more like sunshine feel or, or mm -hmm. whatever, which is yep. crazy because it's not like I want to go out in the sun. Um, <laughs> but it helps. It does help. But mm -hmm. yeah, getting that light, it does, it does help. Um, you know, with that and then keeping myself mm -hmm. scheduled because I can, I can fail myself, right? I can, I can push my own projects around, but if I'm committed to be in someone's group, if I'm committed to put a story in someone's set, if I'm committed to other people that, um, that part of me that doesn't want to let someone else down or be, you know, the, the mm -hmm. kicks in. And so that's how I get through winter. Mm -hmm. Makes so it sense. seems like a lot of obligation and a lot of work and it is, and I'm tired. And especially when those kittens are waking me up at four o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. but, um, but as long as I got other people that I can <clears throat> commit my time and efforts to, then I'll, I'll get All up right. and do it. Hope that makes sense. Yeah. All right. Well, we are at the top of the hour. Yeah, yeah. So um, before we head out, is there anything that anyone wants to specifically highlight? Any new book releases? Any upcoming things? Carol, we will put your link for your Kickstarter in the show notes after we're done here. I'll make sure that's in that. Well, so I'm I signed up for a second because our our list name that I was that I was in with uh, with Jan didn't uh, didn't hit um, sadly but mm -hmm. um, I had such a stress free time with that <laughs> <laughs> that, <laughs> that my my husband was like he's like there was another one realm of midnight that mm -hmm. that you know was looking for you know for people. Um, and he was like, well, he says, you know, give it, give it one more, give mm -hmm. it one more shot. Uh, so I, I have that. I have, so if anyone out there wants to do something awesome um, for Christmas for us, go grab it at, at one of those minor, you know, minor major retailers, the, you know, the iBooks, the Barnes and Noble, Noble and the Kobo. And yeah. um, because that will, that will help us significantly. And then we're going to, I think we get our Amazon link in January. So. Awesome. Okay. Good. And Jane, how about you? Uh, I've got, well, Bell came out um, last week or at the beginning of this. Yeah. This past, it's sad. <laughs> at, the <beginning, laughs> at, at, at the beginning of this past week, Bell came, <laughs> came out under my, you know, not in, the, in, in a set. Um, I've got the Shades of Night series coming out on the 13th on in ebook it's in um hardcover so I, i'm putting that out in ebook and then in january jasmine comes out wow. on january 3rd 
So, and then later in January, once I get the cover, the 10 fairy tales will be in hardcover. You get your work cut out for you with all yes. that formatting. <laughs> oh, well, that one's all formatted and waiting. Oh, I'm you're just, done with that one. Oh, yeah, that one's that one's all set. That one's all set. I'm just I just have to write the blurb. Okay. Which is gonna, you know, ten books. You got to kind of write it across it, mm -hmm. so that's gonna be interesting. Um, and then I I have a cover editor slot in with Cora in the middle of January. And wow. That's okay. when I'll talk to her about the other two that I'm struggling with right now. <laughs> 180 pages has to come out. Oh, <laughs> I do bucks, not envy so. you. I do not yeah. envy you at all. Right. Well, it just makes it, you know, leaner and 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 much more intense because mm -hmm. the Steve Williams series is a very intense series anyway. So, <laughs> and you'll make it happen. There's no doubt oh, in yeah. that. You'll oh, yeah. make it happen. Yes. Yes. Because there uh, is there is some fat that can be trimmed. <laughs> Well, that is it for us, I think, for this year, unless we decide to do a, an impromptu New Year's Eve show. But I will uh, be all here of our, our wonderful viewers out there, <laughs> thank you for hanging out with us this year. Um, yes, we will be you. back in 2023. Everybody have a safe, happy holiday and New Year. And uh, we'll see you then, guys. Thank you. Thank you.